So we assimilate new persons continually into the ministry and leadership of the church. Another thing, pray, uh, prepare the core church for change. You see, very often you have that launch team and the early group of people, they were committed. They were making sacrifice. They had a great vision. We are going to plant this church. It's going to be the church that wins this community. And they made all the commitment to that. But they also had a particular idea of what, how things should go. And what will inevitably happen is the unexpected. You know, you can always expect the unexpected. And remember we said you got to hold your plans flexibly. But what can happen is those original people say, well, we have our plan, we have our vision, but then something new happens. New people start coming into the church. God opens up new doors. And sometimes that original core is not really willing to be flexible. They're not really willing to, um, to adapt to a new situation. They're not willing to hear from other people who also have a heart for serving and maybe a slightly different vision. And so that's going to be really important, um, that that core group does not think that they're privileged because they were there in the beginning. Um, create appropriate structures. Now, we've talked about this in the structuring phase. We had the example from Act 6, so I'm not going to go over this again. But again, creating those caregiving structures, whether you're expanding your small group system, whether you're developing new ministries, you have to be doing that. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lot of unmet needs in the church. That's not going to be healthy. And then remain flexible and encourage steps of faith. Flexibility we've talked about, but encouraging steps of faith. You know, it's a big step of faith to even launch a church plan. I mean, that's a big enough step of faith right up front. But there's always going to be the next phase where you are going to have to exercise another step of faith. And you know what that does? By keeping exercising steps of faith and not always making the safe decision, that keeps you dependent on God. And whenever a church starts getting to that comfortable level, say, well, well you know, everything's going fine right now. Don't rock the boat. Let's not risk anything. Um, let's just keep status quo here for a while. Well, we start getting to a point where we're really not trusting God to do something new. We're not being stretched. I found it a good thing when from time to time our church was stretched. You know, when we started that church in Dachau County, I mentioned I was serving in the North Munich Church, and so the Central Munich and the North Munich Church, we both gave up members. Our church in North Munich only had about 50 members, and we were going to give up probably about, I think there were about eight to ten adults that we gave up to launch that church. Now, some people could have said, oh, wait a minute, boy, you know, we're not very big ourselves. What are we doing trying to do that? That's a step of faith. It's very interesting. You know, I mentioned we had planted the seeds about, well, one day we're going to start a daughter church. From the very beginning, we were, we were thinking this is going to happen one day. It came sooner than we expected, actually. We didn't expect it to happen that quickly. And so we had a congregational meeting. We said, well, do we want to move forward with this? Do we want to launch, the, be a part of this church plant? Do we want to send out some of our members? We're not a very big church. You know, we're, we're walking on faith here. And we had a almost unanimous, well, there was one person who uh, just, they didn't vote no, um, they abstained their vote. Everybody else said, hey, We've been praying about this. God put this in our lap. How can we say no? And so we decided to take the step of faith. And God honored it. And we moved forward. The mother church continued to grow. The daughter church grew. Continually taking those steps of faith. How are we going to meet the budget? Is this what God wants us to do? Take a step of faith. Stretch the people a little. We're trusting God. And then when God honors that, you celebrate it. You celebrate it. It's not ho-hum. You celebrate that. You know what we did when we had our 50th member in that church? 
th sometimes, I don't know if you've ever seen this kind of thing, maybe where you live they don't do this, but in America they do this kind of thing. You know, the, the 1,000th person to enter this new store, you know, and they give them a gift certificate or they, some sort of thing. I had a friend who was like the one millionth attender at a basketball game or something like this, and they gave him free tickets for something in a, in a baseball cap or something. You know, they, they do something special. Like, so we said, well, we reached a landmark. We got 50 members. Wow, that was a big deal for us. You know, we didn't start with very many people. And so we had this was a young woman who had we had a, a, a bouquet of flowers for her, and we kind of made a big deal about this. We said, hey, let's celebrate this. God's blessing us. We made, reached a landmark. That encourages people. Now are we ready for the next step of faith? Take a step of faith. Oh, an evangelistic project. Never done that before. Oh, gosh, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Hey, step of faith. We believe that's what God wants. Well, that's not what God wants. Don't do it. Don't be silly. We think God wants to do this. Ah, well, he's going to stretch our faith. That keeps the church trusting God, it keeps us looking for new works of God, it keeps us saying, you know what? It's not about us. It's not about how good we are and how we can, you know, how talented we are. It's about trusting God to do something we really couldn't do on our own. And so those steps of faith are really a key to keeping a church spiritually sort of on the edge. Uh, you, you want them constantly on the edge. Is God going to bless it or not? Is, is this going to move forward? We have to trust God. We have to be praying. We have to be committed there's no coasting. There's no coasting. See, it's, you know, it's like going up, going up a hill on, on, on your, your, your bicycle or something. You're either pedaling and moving forward up the hill or you're rolling backwards, right? And that's sort of the way it is in, in, in ministry, I think. You're either trusting God for new things and moving forward or you're rolling backwards. There's no coasting. And so the temptation is, after all that hard work, Oh, okay, let's relax a little. Let's let's not uh, push things anymore. All right, so those are my six guidelines, and I'm sure that you could think of many, many more. But just in my observation and being a church planner and coaching church planner, these are the uh, the points that uh, I've continually observed as uh, a key to moving forward and danger points. If you don't attend to them, then the health of the church is probably going to be threatened. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.